morning from Tara here at D-Lab and this is part two of the push to talk installation for the DX60B transmitter. This one behind me comes from Ken W1KMH of Vermont. He's actually the original owner, built this thing long ago and he said it has not been powered up for at least 15 years. So first thing I need to power it up make sure it transmits then we're going to install my new push to talk system and this one is special because it has a new feature called the monologue switch here we go here she is the one owner dx60b transmitter and we're going to install the k1 board but instead of the four pin mic jack this guy elected for this stereo type jack okay so one side of this will be for the push to talk and the other terminal is for the audio. Then we're going to install this push button. It's a push on push off switch. I'm going to put that in the place of the power light for monolog operation. So if you're in AM or CW and you don't want to choke the chicken on your microphone, you can simply push it on, talk, and when you're done, you can push it off. And that is really going to have some value when you're in CW mode. So let's get it installed and I'll show you what it's all about. All right, first off, this is the DX60B working because I sure don't want to put in my modification and think I messed something up, all right? So we're in grid right now, the meter. There's tune. We have grid current. Go to AM. There's my plate. Dip it. See power out. And she's modulating. So that's a good sign. That's all I need to see. Let's power it down. Get the board in. Now here's the bottom side of this transmitter. Remember, this is original owner, so nobody's been in here doing any modifications. It's very clean. This is going to be the area that I'm going to be concentrating in. There's our function switch, microphone input, push to talk board. It's going to sit right in this area just like we did in the last video so the first thing I'm going to do is remove this mic jack and pull this wiring back and I need to remove the power light which is this neon down here and you can see our wire harness is pretty darn close to that so I may have to kind of move that to get it out of the way to make room for the monologue switch because he needs to be in there and the mic jack will be below it all right, so the stock mic jack is removed, and so is this little neon lamp there, the little power lamp. Now here's the beauty of using this quarter inch type of input jack, is you do not have to drill this hole out like we did with that four pin mic jack. This chopper goes right in the stock hole. And the monologue switch is gonna do the same thing. It'll go right in that hole. So no drilling required for this update. So I need to show you this to install the monologue switch the wire harness the way it was originally laid along that chassis is going to interfere with the installation of the switch okay so you pull the harness up and then the switch will drop into that hole alright you're going to have to be very careful here you don't want to damage the harness and you don't want to put stress on your function switch so you can see I've got it down there in place. I put one nut on the end of it right there before it goes into the hole so that it seats against the front panel. At this point, you want to solder on two little black wires and these are simply going to go up in parallel with the push to talk input on your new mic jack. Okay. So I waited until after the switch was installed to solder on the jumpers. You can put them on before, but it may be a little more difficult to get the switch in position. And don't worry about the bottom terminals that are touching the chassis, because we're not using that half of the switch. Now there's the new mic jack installed. I'm not going to wire these at this point. I want to get the push to talk board in, get wired up to the function switch. The last step will be to connect up the jack and the monolog switch. Push to talk modules in place and I've wired to the filaments of V4, this tube sitting right here. Now we need to take these flying leads, hook them to the function switch, this blue wire 
is the push to talk. Well here's what I came up with. If you look right here, you can see the white wire that's going to the front of the switch, and that's pin 9. So what I'm going to do is just cut back some of the lacing on the wire harness so I can get a hold of that wire. We'll cut it and splice it in line rather than going to that front terminal and causing the stress. Pin 8, which is the yellow wire down here, that one is still fairly accessible. So I'm going to solder direct to that terminal and splice into the yellow wire like we did in the first video. So all that we're really doing here, guys, is putting this relay in series with the bias line and the 120 volt line that goes out to your accessory socket for keying the TR switch. So it's a pretty basic operation. Let's see if this simplifies it. Okay, so I cut back the uh, wire harness tie a little bit here and I was able to get to that white wire so you can see he's up and exposed. So I'm going to cut it and we're going to splice the green and white wire of the push to talk module in line right here which is the same thing as going up front and hooking to that terminal and splicing into one wire just makes it easier and a little bit safer. So the wires are cut and stripped and for peace of mind you can actually go back here on the accessory socket and go pin 5 1 2 3 4 5 and that should have continuity here okay that wire is just going back to the accessory socket so we're going in line between these two wires here we go splices are complete the green wire now goes to the front of the switch through the white wire and the white just goes back to the white which goes to pin 5 at the accessory socket but I did tell you guys something wrong I assumed that these were white wires but they're actually white with a red runner so it is a white with a red stripe so I will update that on my schematic. I've completed the wiring on the new quarter inch microphone input jack these are referred to as a TRS funnel jack okay so they have a ground then they have two conductors so you envision a stereo jack that has a tip and the collar and the ground that's what goes in here okay now when you wire these up obviously you're gonna have ground so if I take my meter from there to there you got ground all right that's ground tab then you're gonna have your microphone input and you're gonna have the push to talk input the microphone input will be on the collar so that's gonna be midway down the plug okay so that is the audio in then the push to talk voltage when you key the mic that's gonna be on the tip which is right here okay the reason that you want to do that is when you plug in the jack you don't want the 12 volts from the push to talk circuit to go to your mic element and damage it okay so this is a common practice so if you want to check the function of that monolog switch we would go to this terminal which is the tip hit monolog got continuity and then it's off so that is your manual transmit receive type switch so it works in parallel with the standard push to talk input that you would get off of your microphone there's a close-up of the wiring you can see it's pretty tight but it's doable and that wire harness that was laying down on the bottom of the chassis now is between the mic jack and the monologue switch here we go initial test of the DX60B with the new push to talk module so if I go to tune normally you'd have grid at this point but now we have push to talk so you're gonna have to key it up to tune your grid okay and set that level right then if you go to standby you can key it but nothing happens right because there's no high voltage applied go to AM you can see now we have high voltage so that is kind of your only power on indicator now because we got rid of the power lamp right you gotta give up the game so if you hit this you can see we have grid go to plate and dip it. You see we have some output over there and she's a talking. Now you'd say hey I want to just key my radio and not have to use the push to talk on the microphone. You can do that with the monologue switch. Now at this point I do not have this D104 mic element wired hot so it's not going to modulate but you get the idea. 
So you can either key it with a monologue or key it with a mic. All right now let's go to CW mode. Now let's check out CW mode on the DX60B. I'm going to remove the mic plug. Once again, this is the new style plug you're going to install if you elect to use that jack, which I'd recommend because there's no drilling involved. Push to talk is on the tip, audio, ground. Right? So let's get that out of the way. I'm in standby at this point. So if I were to go to CW, you see our high voltage light come on over there. But at this point, you're not transmitting. Okay? And that's because you have not hit the monologue switch. So you hit monologue, that enables push to talk, and now you're transmitting. When you're done, you just hit it again. You do not have to touch the function switch. Now in the old days when you had this thing, you'd have to go from CW and when you're done, you'd have to go through AM to standby. So you're going through two positions of that switch every time. With a monologue switch, just hit it, and there you go. So I really believe that this is a better system. It makes it to where you have obviously much less wear and tear on the function switch. And now you could actually key your radio remotely if you would like. You could actually put a foot switch into the mic plug here and key your radio that way. So it adds some options. Alright, so we have verified that the keying circuit is working in both AM and CW mode. So we know push to talk operates and so does the monolog switch, but the other thing that you have to have is the switched 120 coming off the back of the radio when you go into transmit mode for the TR switch, right? So I'm in standby. If I hit the monolog switch, you can see we do not have 120. And the reason is is the 120 actually goes through the switch first, okay? So now I'm in AM mode, which enables the 120, but we have broken that with the push chalk relay. So now I transmit, and I've got my 123 volts, okay? Push chalk off, and the voltage goes off. And that's what you want, because you're changing your antenna, right? Over to the receiver and transmitter. Go to CW, same thing. You can see we're transmitting and we have the 120 for the TR switch. So it all looks like it's operating properly. So it appears as though I'll be revising the diagram for the Heathkit DX60 push to talk since we've added a new microphone input jack, the monolog switch, and that one wire that I caught that wasn't actually just white, it's white with a red stripe. So I'm cutting to the new diagram right now so you can take a look at it. I'll supply you with a copy of this if you want to buy one of the little boards. All right. If not, you can just refer to the one in this video. But I think that this push to talk system is really addressing the issues that the DX60 has. Now you don't have to wear out your function switch. You can actually use the push to talk on your mic. Now you've got a monologue deal so you can just hit it and kick back in your chair and blah blah blah. And when you're in CW, now you don't have to rotate between AM and standby between transmissions. And if you want, you can even use a foot switch. So how cool is that? All right, that's a wrap on part two of the DX60 Push to Talk K1 Relay installation. All right, now I am also working on these kits for the DX35, the DX40, the DX100, and an ICO 720. So there's a lot going on here at D-Lab. I guess I better order some more boards. So if you'd like one of these little K1 modules for your transmitter, I've got them in stock. And if I don't have the one that fits your application, tell me what it is, and I can probably make it work. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you again.